Blue whales are the biggest animals that have ever lived. And so you can imagine, or maybe you don't want to imagine, what would be involved in removing the bones from a dead blue whale and preparing those bones to be displayed indoors. It's dirty work that involves a lot of cutting. Dozens of people helped remove the bones from the blue whale, and now, almost eight years later, those bones are about to be hung in the Steel Ocean Science Building on the Dow University campus in Truro. Chris Harvey Clark is a university veterinarian at Dow. So take us back to 2017 on that beach. Where did that whale carcass come from and how did this all start? When I came back to Dow as a university vet in uh, 2014, I walked into the steel and I looked up and I said, we've got to put a whale in here. So then we started looking for a whale and we worked with MARS, the Marine Animal Res- uh, Response Society, and they were just great. They had they had learned of a whale that had been sort of washing up and down the coast of blue, and this had started in April. Um, so it had been dead for a while. Mm. And, but it was never in an accessible spot. And then it washed up in East Berlin, and they were ready to go. So we put a team of people together. Mars was in there. We had a bunch of people from the Atlantic Vet College. We had a bunch of vet students come over. I, bought, I brought about 25 students from Dal, and we had a jamboree on that beach taking trying to take this whale apart. It was terrible. It was cold. It was windy. It was really rough. And a bunch of crazy things happened. Yeah, what kind of issues did you run into well, here? Well, the first first major issue we had really was rough seas, and the whale was partially in the water. So we're trying to pull it up out of the water with a 60-ton excavator. We break the excavator. The whale's wow. probably 70, 80 tons, and it's too much for the machine. And the trouble was the weather was breaking the whale up. It was literally physically smashing this whale Parts were already missing, like one of the jaw bones, the mandible. The other thing we didn't do, which we should have done, was tie the whale down. So we come back to the beach, 7 the next morning. It's washed way up the beach. It's up about 150 meters. Uh, so we basically had to drive the new excavator half underwater up the beach, grab this thing, drag it back up, and get it into a position where we could start to remove tissue from Did it. Did you lose bones in that process? There, it was a nightmare. That second day, the vertebrae were exposed, the waves were rolling them around, and you could see bones bones disappearing. We had people out in the surf trying to collect them. Mm. Uh, the amazing thing is we got over 90% of the bones back. Okay. Uh, and, as, and also the tide went out, the seas came down a little bit and it got a lot easier to do. But we put three hard days in. First day we had about 35 people. Second day we had about 15. And on the third day we were down to about eight. And we're all pretty tired <laughs> and, yeah. the, and the job's not done, you yeah. know. And it was composted for about 18 months. And the process was a very green process. I mean, when a lot of nobody's exactly figured out the best way to do this. You know, how, how do you compost an 80 ton animal? Yeah. And the backstory on that is it's not an inexpensive thing to do. It's, you know, it's, it's a six figure job to, to, uh, to get a whale like this from the stage we had it up to the point where it's basically articulated, tinker toy, and then uh, hung up very carefully because you don't want, you know, five tons of bones landing on anybody's head. Mm. So there's a, a lot going on here. Um, the, the, the ancillary benefit was that um, all of this brought the university and uh, and people at the university became more aware of the Sitka Foundation and the Beatty Family Foundation on the West Coast. And they were approached and were very generous in giving the university a large uh, donation towards, they wanted to do more than the whale. They wanted to do a whole biodiversity center on campus. And this became the Beatty Biodiversity Center Project, which mm-hmm. is now nearing completion uh, with, um, you know, 20,000 square feet of aquariums and museum exhibits and learning center and things like that. So the whale really nucleated a much bigger project in the in the long run uh, that will be great. It'll be publicly available. People will be able to go there and visit and, and see all this stuff, which is pretty neat. Nonetheless, it won't be really available for public viewing for some months because we're some ways away right now from the opening of the center. It'll be sometime in the summer, but people will be able to see this, I hope, before the fall. Awesome. All right. Well, Chris, thank you so much for your time today. Absolutely delighted, Alex.